Dear Bioware, hi, it's me, Austin. Big fan. I heard you were pushing back the release date for Mass Effect Andromeda from holiday 2016 to the first quarter of 2017. Fuck you. Nah, I'm just kidding. You do what you gotta do. With the departure of Chris Schlerf, the lead writer of the previous Mass Effects, and <laughs> senior development director Chris Wynn, you've got quite the creative vacuum over at Bioware Montreal. I'm certainly not gonna suggest that you try to rush out a game while trying to make a new team coalesce. I'm actually not quite as doom and gloom as some folk are about the departure of Wynn and Schlerf. Sure, the first three Mass Effects were great, even three, so I understand why folks are disappointed to see old members of the team move on to other projects, but while it was important for for the first three games to have a coherent and cohesive vision and feel to them, Mass Effect Andromeda is a really fantastic opportunity to reinvent aspects of the franchise and explore entirely new themes and elements of this really great universe you've created. With Andromeda being an entire galaxy far, far away and Mass Effect 3 being a long time ago, having a fresh pair of fingers at the helm to help us explore the wild frontier? Yeah, I can get into that. In fact, this illustrates pretty well how Mass Effect is such an excellently titled franchise. A lot of really well-conceptualized games have a title that's a little too married to the original story of the first game they make, and making new iterations gets kinda awkward. Dragon Age suffers from this a little bit. You're basically fucked to stay within a certain time frame here. God help you if you make a game and don't put a dragon in it. But Mass Effect? Pure brilliance. Naming a science fiction franchise after the core scientific breakthrough that made all the game's technology possible? Fucking Perfect! Let's talk about Mass Effect technology for a second. Mass Effect, or Mass Effect fields, are created by manipulating unobtainium uh, element zero. Anyway, depending on the electric current being run through it, element zero is capable of both raising and lowering the mass of matter within its sphere of influence. This technological marvel is applied to shit. Just about everything, from things as massive as faster than light warp drives, to weaponry, the fucking force, and uh, toothbrushes. Sound like science fiction? Well, kinda. It is. It sounds about as ridiculous as, I don't know, compressing space-time in front of you while expanding it behind you to circumvent relativity limitations to travel faster than the speed of light. Oh, except that's an actual thing. Well, sort of. Physicist Miguel Alcubierre theorized that faster than light travel could be possible if you forgo traditional methods of kinetic energy based propulsion and acceleration and instead directly manipulate gravity to warp spacetime, effectively, uh, uh, like, moving a vessel without actually exerting any kinetic force on it. Initial tests are promising-ish. Huge limitations are the enormous amount of energy needed to power such a thing, if it could ever actually be built. Also, it'd probably invite a host of space Cthulhus from beyond the galaxy to assimilate us. Oh, which brings us back to Mass Effect Andromeda. So, Bioware, let's chat for a bit. To reiterate, I'm really stoked about Andromeda, and I'm glad you're taking time to get it right. That being said, I have to talk to you about a couple things. You see, Andromeda is an opportunity to do new stuff, but we need to make sure that you don't, uh, fall into a few tragic pitfalls that are pretty common. So here are some things I really don't want to see in Mass Effect Andromeda. No synthesis ending bullshit. I don't mean erasing the past or anything like that. And honestly, you're unlikely to find a more vigorous defender of Mass Effect 3's ending more on that another time than me, but the synthesis ending was a huge misstep. You know why? Because it completely circumvented the main themes that you'd built the entire franchise on. Dichotomy and making a tough choice between limited options. So the synthesis ending was, at its heart, a lazy subjugation of the core themes and concepts you spent three games and hundreds of game hours building. Don't cheap out on choices on the 11th hour and and don't compromise your core vision. So whatever themes you go with, stay true to them and don't be lazy. Two, no MMO bullshit. There's this weird fucking tendency among single player games nowadays to insert fucking mechanics and quests from massively multiplayer online games. I even started catching whiffs of this shit in Dragon Age Inquisition. Stop it. If you make me collect seven Rachni dicks or something just because your boss at EA said you needed to put more content in and you panicked, I, well, I, I, I won't do anything, and I'll probably still buy the game. Fuck. I'm totally part of the problem. Number three, no Reapers. Please, I cannot emphasize this enough. You had a nice trilogy. You did. You got to introduce Space Cthulhu and wrap up that plotline. 
9 out of 10. You did it. So I swear to fucking fuck Christ, if you fucking make Reaper as the enemy in Andromeda, I will fucking scream! And don't you cheap out and try to be like, oh, it's not Reapers, it's um the Schneepers. The Reapers even bigger and scarier bosses. Yeah, they can make you bleed right out your nipples. In fact, I try to avoid the whole bigger and scarier route altogether. At some point, all the you are insects to us bad guys just kind of bleed together. You made a sweet choice by going to a new galaxy a long time in the future. Don't waste that rebirth telling the same story over and over again. And number four, the best for last. Keep EA's marketing team's mitts as out of your creative process as much as you possibly can. I cannot emphasize this enough. I know, they're huge and terrifying, but if they do something to fuck up your game like, I don't know, splitting it all up into different episodes to be released every month for $20 a pop, or introducing microtransactions just so you can buy the best guns ever for $5.99, whatever it is, don't let them do it because if they mess it up, you will be blamed because it's your game that's fucked. And that's it. I don't have a lot of faith anymore in the AAA games industry, but I try to believe that anybody is capable of rising above the challenges that plague us. Be the hero I know you can be, Bioware. Don't disappoint me. Sincerely, Austin. P.S. What does Commander Shepard's dick look like? Thank you for reading my letter with me to Bioware. If you liked this episode, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. And if you really liked it, you can go to our Patreon page, and you know, if you have any money to spare, you can contribute whatever you can. And if you can't, that's alright too, I'm just happy that you watched. There's some other videos here, there's the Fallout Storyteller, which is a lore series about Fallout. We have a uh, last video, which is about Geralt's stick. It was very well received and everyone loved it. No one had any problems with it whatsoever. And oh, also this video I did about uh about like why we love post-apocalyptic games and settings. It's uh it's right there. It's right right there for you to watch it. I want you to watch it. I'm recording these things. <laughs>